Hello everybody, welcome back. This is part 27 of our Trumpeter 1200 scale HMS hood build. And this week I'm going to be fitting the secondary armament that I've been preparing over the last few videos. So that's uh, the replacement 4 inch mountings and all the ready use lockers. The UP mountings that are built in part 26. And also the quad Vickers guns where I've added the shields for the after mountings and... I'll be using the MicroMaster parts for all of those, some of them modified. To fit the after quads, I'm going to have to build a couple of platforms for those. Uh, so we'll go over to the bench and I'll be doing those. Uh, we'll also take a look at preparing the ready use lockers as well because they do need a little bit of work to them just to remove some of the moulding supports that. Uh, are needed to print uh, the 3D parts. So we'll do those as well over at the bench. I'm not going to have time this week to build the pom-poms uh, so I'll do that as a separate video uh, next week. I might get it in in addition to the usual Friday night video but we'll have to see about that. But they're quite a complicated build and it's probably going to take me a couple of days to build uh, those three pom-poms. So that's the target for this week. So we'll get over to the bench, we'll prepare the ready use lockers and build the uh, after quad platforms as well. Right, so here we are. This is uh, the equipment that we need for the four inch uh, mounting. So we've got the actual guns themselves here. And these are the ready use lockers uh, that will be fitting around uh, each gun position. So each gun has five of these, so we need 35 in total for the seven uh, mountings. And you need to be careful how you prepare these because each one has this arrangement of latches around the outside and in the middle of the doors here. But when you get these parts, they also have a number of supports so there were two up here and three or four along here and they're supporting these tiny little latches here. You just need to uh, be aware of what's a supporting part and what isn't. And I just use the image uh, from the MicroMaster website to determine uh, what was waste on these and what uh, you actually needed to retain. Just a word of warning about them, the uh, material that's used, and I think it's some sort of resin, is extremely uh, brittle on these, and they break very, very easily. I've broken one or two and had to repair them. Uh, so just be very, very careful how you take them off the mounting base and how you actually clean them up uh, otherwise you will break them so I'm going to move these out of the way uh, I'll just get them mounted on some double-sided tape ready for priming you can see we've got the uh, four inch guns nearly done but I'm just going to run through some preparation for those mountings before we get them primed. Just one or two little things that we need to do to them to make them completely accurate for the hood. Okay so this is how the mounting uh, arrives and if you want to look at the uh, review that I did of these parts uh, last week It'll just uh, show you in a bit more detail what they look like, but I'm going to actually put them together. The first job is to uh, remove the parts. On the barrels and the breech, all you need to do is remove that support at the back there. Otherwise the part's ready to use. And with the mounting itself, you just need to break away some of these uh, supports 
and as I said the material is very brittle so it doesn't take a lot to snap them off and get ready to catch it you don't want to drop it so here we've got the mounting and there's just one or two things to clean up on it so we've got a tiny support there that's not required you can see how easily it snaps off there's a couple more inside where the fuse layer seat is which is this part so just take that off and on the other side see if we can get some better light on it on the other side we have another piece of supporting material just there above the uh, right hand fuse layer seat and those are the only supports I can identify everything else is meant to be there these uh, supporting columns are obviously uh, to support the shield so we leave those in place but uh, that's all cleaned up now on the hood this central strip here on these QF mountings wasn't there it must have been a different uh, model of shield so I just need to remove that and use a brand new knife blade to clean these up because as I said the material is brittle and you got a good chance of cracking these if you if you're using a blunt blade and I'll finish it off with a fine file. Don't want anything too coarse on these. And on all of these mountains, there's a peculiar bump here down at the bottom. And I'm not sure whether that's intentional, intentional, but it looks a bit strange. So on all mine, I've just flattened those out a little bit. and just level the bottom out as well The gun itself just fits into a couple of U-shaped uh, mouldings on the trunnion side. So you have to lift the breech right the way up into the top of the shield. and just maneuver it around until it uh, slots into place and the last thing I want to do on these I'll show you on this one that I've already completed these are I believe for awnings uh, or little screens that sat on top of the uh, shield and I think it just gave a bit of extra weather protection for the crew so we glue those on they're going to need to be bent uh, down through 90 degrees these hooks face downwards so we'll do that on all the others these brass parts are provided as part of the Pontos enhancement for the trumpeter plastic and we can attach this uh, awning bracket and I just glued it onto the underside and resting up against these two shield supports here so it doesn't matter which way around these go they're uh, they'll bend in either direction so with just a bit of 
medium super glue I'm just going to drop it into the back underside of the shield so when that's completely set up I can go ahead and bend the arms downwards these curved parts at the back so they're all ready to go uh, once we've primed them right so all the uh, weapons except for the pom-poms are ready uh, but before I can fit the quads to the model I just have to build the two aft platforms which are these here or this is one of them at any rate so this is the trumpeter pedestal with uh, Pontos H brass additions to it so the ammunition box the railings and the supports underneath so uh, we need to make the other one of those this is the trumpeter uh, platform and you can see straight away that it's got two ammunition boxes on it these only had the one here and I think the railing in the trumpeter kit is just a standard uh, three bar railing all the way around you can see on the Pontos part it's uh, accurate in that it has a kinked railing to it so the upper part is just a bit wider in diameter than the bottom part obviously the first thing we need to do with this is to prepare it for the Pontos parts and that involves removing the ammunition boxes and the solid quite thick uh, fillets underneath. I'm going to try and save these uh, boxes if I can and that's because Pontos only provide us with one replacement ammunition box and actually there was another one positioned on the deck below this platform so we can just save those and I'll be able to uh, just clean those up and they'll look fine on the deck below they're hardly visible but uh, we do need those so I'll hang on to them so I'll get rid of the fillets underneath or brackets whatever we want to call them So the first thing I want to do with the brass is just to get the base piece which actually sits underneath the plastic platform. The other thing I'll do is just open the location hole at the bottom. I've found in the past that a lot of these trumpeter parts the mouldings for the parts to fit onto are quite tight and obviously with a construction as delicate as that we won't be able to force it at all it's just going to have to uh, fit straight away into its position so just opening it like that just helps it ease into place without forcing it. I just want to test fit this piece which fits underneath the platform and I actually found that on the first one the actual pedestal was a bit too big for the hole in that uh, brass part and I had trouble sliding it over and that won't go over at all so we need to take some of this material off try and do it equally all the way around we still want to be left with a column when we've finished nearly there it's just a bit tight at the top okay try again that's it that's uh, okay so that we can get it nice and tight and flat up to the underside of the plastic platform so that's good no that'll fit now 
So I'll just put the plastic to one side whilst we fit the brackets to the underside. There are six altogether, there are four. In. So there are six brackets altogether that we need to put on this. So uh, four in a cross shape and then two which uh, support the ammunition box on top. And I'm going to solder those for strength. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that that's not going to move around. Just clean up the slots where the brackets will fit in. I do that quite a lot where I blow dust and stuff away and forget that there are parts lying around which blow all over the place and some of them like that one are quite difficult to find. So the other one's gone somewhere. Who saw where it went? There it is. And uh, I'll start with this one here. So just put a small amount of flux paste into the groove and I want to locate the bracket. The thing with this is to make sure that it's properly positioned far enough towards the ring in the middle. Otherwise what you'll find is that the brackets will stand off the uh, pedestal itself. And it'll look a bit odd, it's not the end of the world, but it'll just look a bit strange. And I'll just position a grain of solder. I'll just get my magnifier just to make sure that that's in the right place. Which it is. So... I've got a grain of solder in there. So this is 100 gram car flux solder and I'll take off probably half a millimetre and then cut it in half again. So that's a tiny amount but it's plenty to do a bracket like this. And then I can just come in with the iron set at 350 I'll just uh, clean that up. I've got a square file here. I use some fairly coarse files for cleaning these parts up. And that's because solder tends to clog fine files. And my best ones I don't use for this purpose because it does ruin them. So I'll work around, do this one next. got a bit too much on that I think but I tinned the soldering iron and had a bit too much on the soldering iron tip so it's transferred onto the part. If you're not happy soldering and I know a lot of people are, are not happy uh, to solder. I only started uh, 
just a few weeks ago just one or two little uh, tips and tricks that uh, some subscribers some of my subscribers sent in they've been really useful and have got me going and it's uh, striking how much stronger a soldered joint is compared with using uh, super glue you can just feel these parts when they go into the slot properly so I don't know if you can see on the end of the tweezers there that's the amount of solder I'm using So flux onto the joint, a tiny amount of solder as well, and just a touch with the iron. So this is a, a new iron to me, it's a, a Hakko FX 880. And I thought I'd invest in a decent iron uh, just because of the amount of soldering that I'm starting to do on these models. So the main benefit of using such a tiny amount of solder is that you don't have an awful lot of cleanup afterwards. And uh, you don't need masses of solder to hold these parts together. Okay, so that's all cleaned up. I'll do the ammo box now. So this is the ammunition box. And I just want to fold it up. It's a simple uh, assembly. I want the uh, lid nice and tight as well. So you can get some flux right down to the bottom where the lid joins on. I just want to hold it in such a way that the lid's tight but at the same time obviously I've got to get the iron in and then this can be soldered onto the platform so the way that I did this with the other one was to just, I did it actually upside down. And I'll just tin the, I'll just tin the platform here where the ammunition box goes. So you can see we've got the box nice and steady. It's not going to go anywhere, hopefully. And to do this one, I'm just going to put a bit of flux around the edge. And I'm going to put solder onto the iron itself, which I don't often do. I usually use those little pellets. Just before I put the iron away, just give it a good clean and just a bit of uh, tinning on the end just to protect it. It's, it would be easy to knock this off.
Again, as I said, you can glue these parts. <laughs> With this assembly, though, you've got the railings to build next. So, you know, you're manoeuvring this part around quite a bit. And because of that, it's just easy to break parts off when they're just glued on. Whereas, provided these are treated with a little bit of respect, they're going to stay where you've put them. So that's the brackets in, the ammunition box on. And we're in a position now to fit that to the plastic platform. So, you just see if it fits. Yeah, it still does. Sometimes, if you get these brackets just slightly too far in, it does obstruct the fitting of this piece. But I think we've got away with it in this case. So, uh, I think that'll go. Let's get the, that glued on now. So, I'll fix this into place with some thick... CA so just wait just be patient and let that go off with it because it's the thick variety it does take a little bit longer than normal to set up just while I'm holding on to that the plan for the railing is to fit the lower part first. There are two parts to the railing. There's the bottom section, which I'll fit first. And then the top section attaches to that. So it's quite a delicate part of the build. I think that's okay. Again, I just want to give it a, a clean... And I'll just go around the outside and smarten the join between the brass and the plastic up. And I've got a bit of thin CA in there, so it'll just act as a bit of filler as well. Right, so we'll do the scary bit now. These are the two railing parts. So that's the lower and the upper. These stanchions here need to be folded through 90 degrees so that they fit and extend the diameter of the railing at the top. So the first thing we've got to do is to make sure that this doesn't move around. Uh, so as I said, we'll start with this bottom rail. So each of these sections has a fold line on it. So it's not circular, it doesn't follow the circular shape of the platform. Actually, if you look at it, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's a nine-sided shape. Is that a nonagon? I think so. So each one of these has a tiny fold on it. So I don't know what the internal angle of a nonagon is, but whatever it is, that's the angle you're looking for. So while I've been folding this, I've just done the maths in my head, and it must be 40, mustn't it? So I'm guessing if my school maths is any good, it would be 40 degrees. But uh, I could be wrong. I've long since left that sort of calculation behind. The thing with shaping these is not to try and get it exact. Because we'll do that as we're following the shape of the platform. So each of the apexes will get onto the outside diameter of uh, the platform here. And eventually it will fit into shape. 
One thing that we just want to be careful of is to get them as a mirror image of each other. So there's an access ladder up the side of, uh, to access the platform up the side here. And in this case, it's to this side of the ammunition box. So on this one, I want the open gap on the right side of the ammunition box. And that'll give us a mirror image. So I'm going to start with this piece of railing here, which I want to locate just to the side of the ammo box. And I found on the first one the best way to do it was to use some medium super glue. I tried to use uh, extra thin and it didn't work. So, so this first section is the trickiest one to get on because the rest of the railing wants to fall off all the time and it drags it out of position. So when that's set up it does become easier as we work around. I'll actually just give it a squirt of accelerator off camera just to bind that first section into place. And now that first piece is fixed we can make all the other angles to fit perfectly around the outside and we'll do it a section at a time and I can now use some extra thin as we work round just to wick onto the outside. The trick to this assembly is to just do it in sections. You can't I don't think you can really hope to do it in one to try and get each of these angles exactly right uh, I think would be a bit too difficult so if you work through the difficulties of that first couple of sections it really does get easier honestly just to make sure that that's absolutely set up I'm just going to give it another blast with some uh, super glue activator now with this part we have to fold up each of these stanchions or just fold them through 90 degrees so I'll just start with the end ones and I just want to be careful to bend it the right way because you're not going to get more than one chance to do this. The very delicate, I broke one off on the first one. So just try and do it in one movement. We don't want to be going backwards and forwards. These will just snap off. And I'll bend it as I go around like we did with the lower part of the rail. I've been lucky there. That's grabbed straight away. So each of these stanchions now fixes to its partner on the bottom level. So we need some medium super glue and glue each section down at a time. Doing it like this you've just got to lift the stanchion over and fix it down one at a time. So do the next bend and as we do lift the stanchion up and over. So let's get these let's get these last two in now. I think that's about it. I'll just set that with some accelerator and then we can just and then we can adjust the shapes. So just from above, we can just move these around a little bit. 
just until they are fairly symmetrical all the way around the platform. There. Okay, so I think I'll call that done. Uh, coat of primer and that'll be okay. I just want to check the fit of the actual quad onto here because these are the MicroMaster parts, the generic. And something was telling me that that wouldn't fit and that's the case. The pin on the bottom of the MicroMaster 3D resin parts are a bit too thick. So I'm just going to have to drill that out a little bit. So I've just opened that up a little bit and the gun's going to fit fine now. I want to get all these parts uh, primed and painted and then we can get them fitted onto the ship. Right, so we can start uh, fitting some of these parts now. I've already uh, replaced some of the ready-use lockers. Uh, the ones that I fitted in a previous episode, they've all been done now. The other couple of jobs that I've done uh, before fitting all this equipment is just to run around the splinter shields here. I did these a couple of episodes ago and there was just a little gap to tidy up around the bottom. So I've been in there with some uh, Milliput Superfine uh, white filler and just very gently uh, brushed them in, just dusted them in again with some of the uh, grey paint. I wanted to do those before uh, fitting the guns and the ready use lockers. Uh, just because it would be hard to get in and uh, do the masking and so on. So uh, that was a job that needed doing. The other thing that I've done, and I'll come to it uh, in a bit when I do the quads, is I've repainted the forward quad platform in Cortesine Brown. Uh, I'd originally done them in grey, but uh, I changed my mind about that. There's some more information come to light. As ever with the hood, uh, there's information coming all the time after analysis of photographs. So uh, that's one of the other things that's come up uh, recently that the quad platform at the front was in cortisine. So that's done, that's ready. Right, so let's get some of this equipment fitted. I've already done some of the ready use lockers. So the ones around position three and number seven gun at the back. The lockers for all those which I did in a previous episode. Uh, they've all been replaced with the um, 3D printed ones. Except for this one here which goes underneath the quad platform. So I want to fit the quad platform first just to make sure that that locker is going to fit underneath. So uh, let's see if these guns will fit in. I hope they do. The holes are actually uh, enormous. The We're going to actually have to glue these. But I'll just position them in place just for the minute. These um, little awning supports on the backs of the shield here, uh, I haven't tried to get them absolutely perfectly lined up. The photographs that I've seen show that these have been bent. Uh, they must have got damaged in service. They're only very uh, thin uh, wires, I imagine. So uh, the photographs I've seen see them show them being uh, quite uh, random so I've not tried to I've not tried too hard to get those straightened out
just see if the UP is going as easily. These are a bit tighter. I'm just going to run round with a knife just to ease them off a little bit. So that easing of these location holes just helps these go in without having to force them. When you've got uh, these very delicate brass parts added to the plastic, you don't really want to be forcing them because they break ever so easily. Okay, so that's the four shelter deck UPs in. There is um, another one to go on the top of B turret. So I'll start adding the ready use lockers now. So I'm following the location in the Anatomy of the Ship book. So I'll do the number two port guns first. These 3D lockers that I'm using the only contact point that you've got is on the two uh, feet. So the accuracy that's in them, these lockers did have feet. Uh, the problem is that it gives you such a small uh, surface area to locate these in. So we'll just have to hope that this uh, glue, this is uh, gator grip glue. I'll just have to hope that it's strong enough. I really don't want to use CA on this. The chances of making a real old mess of the decks is pretty high so at least if we make a mistake with this uh, grip, gator grip, it just wipes off. So I've got that uh, in a mess and that's where the gator grip comes in. If I'd have been using uh, CA there that would have been quite uh, difficult to sort out. The lockers on this number two port gun were a bit of a puzzle for a while because uh, the anatomy of the ship and the Board of Inquiry drawings only show uh, four lockers uh, on this gun and I couldn't see how that would be the case when all the others had five but eventually uh, I managed to track down the position of the mystery fifth locker uh, in this position here. 
And I did that thanks to Sean, who's helped me out quite a few times uh, with this build, uh, giving me bits of information and sending me photographs to back up that information as well. And that's absolutely invaluable when you're doing something like this. And Sean managed to give me some photographs which identified this as the position of the mystery locker, we called it. Uh, so thanks for that, Sean. It's another piece of invaluable uh, information from you. I really appreciate it. So this can now go in. So there we are, Sean. That's our mystery locker. I want to fit these uh, quad pedestals now. I've already done the port side one. So I'll do the starboard one and that will enable us to fit the last of the ready use lockers which was located underneath this one. I hope it fits. So that just manages to slide underneath. Okay, I'm going to leave that to set up properly now. I'm just going to temporarily position the quads just for some photographs at the end. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. I want to do a little bit of detail painting on these quads. The barrels need to be painted black. Uh, and I might do one or two other little bits with them before I actually come to fit them. But if I do, we'll catch up again on that next week. Okay, so that's uh, all come together pretty well. So that's all the secondaries done except for the pom-poms. Uh, and I'm going to be tackling those next week uh, in part 28 it'll be. That's the uh, majority of the secondary armament fitted. I've just got to do the pom-poms uh, and I'll be tackling those as a separate video uh, next week. It'll be in part 28 coming up. Uh, they're quite complicated structures so it's going to take uh, quite a while to build all three of them. There's one for the after pom-pom bandstand and one each on either side of the shelter deck forward here between the two funnels. So as I said I've just got a little bit of work to do on the quads. I want to paint the barrels on those and do a little bit of detail painting on them. So there we are that's another stage done. I'm quite happy with that progress and the deck is looking nice and busy now. The ship's boats uh, occupy the rest of the space uh, in the middle of the shelter deck. Uh, and we'll be tackling those uh, in a few episodes time. I'll probably do them over the uh, space of a couple of weeks uh, to get them all finished. There's quite a few of them. The MicroMaster 3D guns are quite an improvement on what's supplied in the kit and they're probably a little bit better as well than what we can achieve with the Pontos details added to the trumpeter parts. The set of seven uh, four inch guns that I built a couple of weeks ago are now on their way to Kansas to uh, Vincent. So Vincent I hope they survive uh, the mail system and they get to you safely uh, in the next week or 10 days uh, and I hope uh, you can make good use of them so thanks for that. So that's it I'm going to call time on the, the video at that stage I think we've done enough for this week and we'll be building those pom-poms and I'll show you the detailed painting of the quads as well. So. Uh, have a good week everybody, stay safe, enjoy your modelling if that's what you're doing and I'll see you in another seven days. Bye for now.